Hello, a few of you have asked me how to make the Bluetooth ammo can speakers that I posted earlier so I figured I would try to make a short video and give you a brief overview of what I did and maybe you can uh, adapt it for for what uh, you would like. So first of all I started out with just uh, if you search online you can find a 50 cal uh, ammo can as they as they call them. I found these on Amazon for 19 bucks. Um, found them on sale at Walmart for eight dollars and ninety seven cents. It really doesn't matter. Um, they're pretty pretty sturdy no matter where you get them from. So some of you probably d disagree, but doesn't matter. Um, after that, uh, you're going to have to tackle drilling the holes. So you're going to need uh, uh, at the very least holes for the four inch uh, speakers or whatever size it is that you choose. So I picked up uh, just a regular old hole saw from my local hardware store. Um, and use that to drill my holes uh, for my speakers. Um, you can see pretty much how it turns out. You need to be really careful. Uh, as you can see, I had this one kind of jump on. It will scar up your, your box. So uh, use the slow speed on your drill. Uh, lots of lots of lubricant. WD-40 works just fine. Just need a constant, you know, spray every few seconds just to kind of keep the, the blade lubricated and uh, keep it from uh, actually melting uh, melting the saw. Trust me, from experience, you want to you want to do it that way. Um, also, I picked up just these kind of really common sealed lead acid batteries. Um, again, you can find these on Amazon. It's not really important which one you pick up or how large it is, just so long as it's a 12 volt battery. Uh, this one happens to be 12 volts at 7 amps. It says it'll run 20 hours. Um, the the amp that I'm using only pulls about two and a half uh, amps so uh, math says it could run somewhere north of 50 hours or something like that so I don't know um, I haven't really tried it to see how long it'll run so it's up to you to figure that out um, so the amp that I've been using these are the Pyle P-Y-L-E this is the PFA 330BT for Bluetooth uh, it's fairly simple on the front of it, um, you know, volume controls, treble, bass, uh, Bluetooth switch, on off switch. Um, on the back, it has uh, your speaker connections, of course, uh, your power, which it comes in, it comes included with uh, an accessory power plug that you can run in, microphone if you want to put a microphone in. Then also you can use these left and right ends here to uh, plug in a regular uh, headphone jack. And again, those are available on Amazon but it uh, wasn't really something I felt I needed to incorporate since most people have Bluetooth these days anyway. So, um, so once you drill your holes, uh, the speakers you know, are pretty straightforward to go ahead and mount up. Um, you just pretty much need to line them up straight. I don't do anything crazy to do it. I literally just lay out a ruler to make sure that the holes are straight. Um, and I go ahead and mark my holes. I, I punch them with a hole punch and then I just drill them out. I did go ahead and buy, uh, pre-buy a few extra of the M3 screws that you see here and the nylock nuts to put on the back end of them um, so that I'll ensure they won't come out. Uh, one of the other things that I've been buying are these power panels. You see they come real nice with a power switch, a voltage, a USB, and a 12 volt um, accessory plug. What I've been doing with the accessory plug is I've been wiring this actually direct to the battery. So I haven't been switching this this plug. I've been wiring this direct to the battery. And I've been using this to go ahead and charge the batteries on it. Um, my suggestion for that is you use, um, they have them available on Amazon again, it's just a, a 12 volt half amp uh, battery charger. And they come and look pretty much just like this. Uh, the one I bought came with alligator clips attached to it. I went ahead and purchased a 12 volt accessory plug and I just went ahead and soldered that onto it. And so when I'm ready to charge, I just unplug the 12 volt, plug it in, and it charges my battery just as simple as that. And because it's a smart charger, it's going to know when the battery's peaked and that will be, and it will shut off and it won't overcharge the, the sealed battery. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, just a peek in the inside. I'll turn it over here so you can see it better. Um, you can see the, the four port panel here. I pretty much just soldered everything in. Um, you know, if you have any basic, you know, soldering skills, you should be able to handle this. 
Um, the panel itself comes with some, some crimped uh, blade connectors that you can use if you don't feel comfortable soldering. The biggest thing though that I did is that I, I went ahead and soldered in uh, the USB plug, the voltage regulator in together and piped those into the switch. So those will all be switched. Um, and then of course the out, you'll see this is the accessory plug here that comes, so I don't know if you can really see that very well, that comes with the amplifier itself. So that's kind of just a brief overview. Um, I, I did go ahead and hold the battery in with Velcro. It actually works very well, um, as well as the amplifier. Um, I held it in with Velcro. It's very sturdy, and uh, so far I haven't had it come loose. Anyway, I know I said that was going to be brief, uh, but I see we're pushing six minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and shut the video off, and I hope this helps some of you.